In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a cheap and easy, realistic looking pond that doesn't actually use resin. What it does use is your normal standard PVA. Now, the little caveat to this is not all PVA will dry clear. Some dry a little bit opaque and a little bit white. So you need to test it before you do this. Now, you just do that by putting, getting a piece of card and just doing a thin layer of PVA and checking that it dries clear. If your PVA doesn't dry clear, then I'm going to show an alternative alternative at the end of this video because I don't really recommend just buying different types of PVA to make sure it does. I will say for sure that this one is fine but in this video I also test this sort of Elmer's school glue and this didn't work at all even though on my test piece it sort of looked like it was going to. Now one extra thing here, my actual end piece doesn't look particularly great because I sort of ruined it by doing too many layers. I did five layers here it, and it's gone a little bit white. I should have probably stuck to three or four. That's a mistake, but I'm not making another pond just so I have a nice one to show you, but I will show you how you make this. Let's do it. To start with, we're going to need a base for our pond and then we're going to need something to make the embankments that surround the pond, you know, to give it its actual shape. There's a couple of different ways to do this and different basic materials. I'm going to be using foam board. Now, I would recommend something maybe more like 3mm MDF or EPVC. But if you do foam board, it does work, but there's just a slight risk of warping. So you just draw out your shape on whatever base you're using and then cut that out. I do recommend beveling the edges if possible because you want it to blend into your board a little bit better. And then we need to work on the embankments. And there's two ways that I'm going to look at here. One of them is one that I've used when I did my dried pond, which is basically I'm going to cut strips out of foam board and I'm going to glue them along the, the outer edges of my base. Again, beveling both the inside and the outside so it all like it creates like a nice little bank. Now you will have gaps between your foam board pieces. The way that I'm going to fill them in is with filler, which I believe is spackle or joint compound, pre-made joint compound for you Americans. Just cover that in. Uh, now what I would recommend here is that you try and keep it reasonably smooth and you can smooth this with water. However, for the like middle part of the pond, yeah, I do recommend keeping that smooth as, as smooth as possible basically. The alternative method to this is essentially like a homemade sculptor mold kind of product. So what I'm going to do is take some cheap plaster of Paris, mix that with water just to create some actual plaster. And then I'm going to take some rough chunks of toilet paper and just mix them together. So you want to make sure you mix your plaster first and then add your toilet paper because in a previous video I found that that can give you really nice smooth effects. You want to make sure that's fully mixed and that all of your toilet paper is like mixed in with the plaster because you don't want you know, just bits of toilet paper that isn't going to harden. And then all I do though is I just roll it into sausage shapes and just put that around the edge of my base. Now, one of the shapes that I made does inadvertently look like a private part and that was completely by accident, but next time I might do it intentionally. Again though, if you are going to be using the sculptor mold, I tried to keep the middle essentially as flat and smooth as possible. You're going to have to let that dry. In the case of the sculptor mold, that'll be like 20 minutes probably. And in the case of the filler, that I'd leave that overnight. And then we're going to sand the base, but I'm going to not put sand on the middle of the pond. So I'm going to put PVA around the edges on the embankments, and then I'm going to sprinkle some sand over it and let that dry. Once that's dried, I'm going to paint the whole thing brown, and then I'm going to dry brush the sand like a lighter brown. You can paint the middle brown as well. There's no harm in doing that. So at this point, we're going to have to have a conversation that is basically, is water blue? Now, this is a debate that rages on in Luke APS Facebook group. I see it many times there. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to pretend to know. But what I will say from my research is that basically, in large quantities, water is ever so slightly blue. It is mostly transparent, though. And, you know, you'll see that the water in the sea is blue. But generally, that's probably because it's reflecting the sky. However, in like rivers and ponds, the colour tends to be sort of more murky, brown, browny green. It's not generally bright blue. You could do your pond bright blue. People would call that like a stylized effect. Or you can go for anywhere from like a pure stylized to as realistic as possible. Water, slightly blue. But I mean, just do what you want. To paint it, I just get some blue, some green and some brown. I try and make the darkest like browny, bluey colour in the middle. And then I simply lighten it up with, you know, a bit of blue and a bit of green. And I sort of dry brush, dry brush, um, 
leave the middle dark and then I dry brush like around it and then I take a lighter colour and then dry brush around that. Basically you want a dark middle point and you want it to get lighter as it gets to the edges basically to simulate depth. Now I don't do a particularly good job here. The next thing I'm going to do is add my flock. So in this case I'm just going to take some PVA, put it around the edges and sprinkle on different variants of Woodland Scenics flock. I think I'm using like a mid green, a dark green and a light green. You could just use blended turf. And then we are ready to add our water effects. Now the first one I tried was an Elmer's school glue because I thought oh this will be usable and obtainable for you Americans and when I tried it on my test piece it looked fine. It was clear and it dried fine but when I actually put it in one of the ponds it dried but it dried matte. It wasn't shiny at all and the shininess is important and there was little speckles of white where it hadn't quite like disappeared. So I had to ditch that and actually the PVA that I already currently owned was perfect for this. So the way that I would personally recommend it is that you simply just put your PVA in it. You don't want to water your brush or anything like that. You want pure PVA and you're just going to spread it about. Now if you're getting like lines in your PVA, which inevitably you should probably do because it should really be thin layers, what I suggest is to sort of like dab at it. We're not trying to create like waves we want it to be as smooth and flat as possible but what we don't want is unnatural sort of like paint brushes you know like brush marks so just stipple at it and that'll give you like a wavy texture but pva one of the reasons this technique works is that pva sort of wants to flatten a little bit whereas say something like a gloss gel perhaps doesn't anyway i do that on two pieces now i definitely overstep the mark here i do maybe like four five six layers and really uh, as i said icarus flying too close to the sun i should probably have stopped at three instead maybe four however i kept going and what happened with one of my pieces one of the pieces went basically it started to whiten the color just started to show through with the pva instead of it being clear it started to tint towards the white and uh, that's the one that looks a little bit like a private part the other one i tried something completely different on the other one where i've been using pva what i did was i got some uh, water and like one drop of dish detergent like you know what you wash your dishes up, uh, dishes with and i made myself like a homemade flow aid and then i poured that into a bit of pva mixed it together and then i poured that pva on as like a, a a reasonably thick layer i was thinking well it'll smooth out and it won't look like it undulates and this was a failure on two levels one i think adding water to the pva essentially made it so that it it wasn't as transparent and it started to become a little bit opaque so that also looked a little bit white and secondly it didn't even have a smooth layer so it was pretty much completely pointless so yeah i would just do three layers of pva and i think that's probably the sweet spot where it will show depth and not be tainted in any way now let's say you you tried your pva and it doesn't work well there's another cheap effect that initially the, i saw this and i think all of the internet saw this from luke aps he found a instead of using resin you could basically use like a two-part epoxy glue and you could get this for cheap in the UK in like a pound shop. So for one pound, you could basically have a nice looking pond. Now in the US, I'm not sure if you can get it for that cheap. I would presume so. I, however, ordered mine off Amazon for like five quid because I didn't want to go out because of the current world situation. And this is pretty simple. All you do is you, it's, they're in these little tubes. You like cut the end off, mix them together and then pour it in. I say it's pretty simple. I then even messed this up because whilst I did my first pour, there was a little bit left in the mixing tray. So I thought, oh, I'll mix that together and add it to my main pour and it'll be a bit you know thicker and it'll look better however what i hadn't realized is that it had already dried now it does say the drying time is five minutes but i was like oh it i didn't realize it had already happened and what i basically ended up with was like a book i basically poured a very thick liquid onto a solid surface and i've got like a big blob and i also ended up with a random line where it had dripped basically a complete and utter disaster but you can see to the one side of it it does actually look nice however i thought oh I've tried the PVA method, maybe here what I'll do is instead of having a nice smooth surface I'll add a bit of PVA to it, so I did like a PVA layer, maybe that would blend in, you know, where I've I messed it up with the extra drips, and well yes you end up with uh, the undulations and stuff but it did not blend in the ugliness of my random drip, so it's a cheap method if you can get access to that and you don't want to use resin, but it is also a little bit smellier and you need to be in a well ventilated area. PVA is relatively safe. I'm not suggesting you drink it, but it's relatively safe. And 
generally kid friendly so if you just stick with the three layers of PVA it doesn't take very long to do but obviously you have to let it dry and you need to let it dry completely clear because if you put it on too thick what will happen is the top of it will dry but you'll still see white underneath where it's not contacted with the air you need to leave it don't put on another layer you need to let that under layer dry even though it's not in contact with the air uh, so that's why a thin layer is better if you do thick layers i can't guarantee that the the pva at the bottom will dry clear now even though i said i, I flew too close to the sun and I, I i ended up with like a slightly opaque pond you could hopefully see throughout the video that the one that is just um sort of inadvertently looking like a private part that even though it's a little bit white it still sort of looks good it still looks blue it's like a bluey white pond now you might argue that jay i i don't like the blue that's fine do brown do dark agreed it's you know it's fine but ultimately i like i think it looks okay like on the table uh, i'm not really going to question it too much i said i really do wish that i stopped at three instead of like five layers that was a mistake and then onto the other one where it was still pva that was looking fine like the little small pond that i did again i tried to do that like flow aid experiment and whilst it did look a little bit smoother it the end result basically went white again i think that's because i was adding water to it now i might have just added water to one of the layers of pva but you know it's too late i'm not going to go back and do any more layers to try and compound the issue and then finally moving on to the two-part epoxy um, glue it's a shame because on one side of it i actually think it looks really good even with the extra little ripples that i did at the end i think it looks really nice however i made the mistake of not realizing that the first layer had dried and then poured more of the epoxy glue on top of the dried one uh, on top of the dried amount and i ended up with like a bubble and then a little bit of a drip to a line and it looks pretty awful on that side but uh, that's a tr tried and tested method luke aps did that uh, many years ago if you can get it for cheap and you're just doing a pond that's a really good um thing to do however it is a little bit smellier you need to be a bit more cautious about using it and you need to not mess it up like i did thank you so much for watching this video if you did enjoy this video do press like and make sure to subscribe if you're interested in wargaming terrain it really would help and i would really appreciate it there is always patreon if you really want to like push the boat out but either way thank you just very kindly for watching have a most beautiful day and goodbye